All right, some breaking inputs which have just come in where India's Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has reacted to former Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's acknowledgement that the Mumbai attacks were carried out by Pakistanis. Sitaraman has said that India's stand has in fact been vindicated and has of course been proven right. State which has been continuously in denial even when uh, proofs have been absolutely unquestionable. It is uh, not surprising, but it is absolutely uh, something which has to be thrown to the whole world to see. Whole world to see. So that they know that all the lectures that Pakistan gives to the whole world about human rights and about how Pakistan itself is a victim is all bogus. All right, so that is what India's Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman had to say, stating that it is not surprising, but this is something that puts forth very strongly the fact that India's stand in terms of what had happened in Mumbai in the 26-11 terror attack has now been vindicated. And for more on this, we are joined in by my colleague Siddhant Sibyl. Good afternoon to you, Siddhant. What more information do we have on this? Well, uh, the Defence Minister of India has uh, reacted on what uh, the former Pakistan Prime Minister said in an interview to Dawn yesterday, saying that uh, uh, 2611 was done by terrorists who had faith event in uh, Pakistan. He basically saying that it proves India stand has been right all through the way, and uh, it affirms and vindicates what India has been saying for a long time. And of course. Uh, Today, Pakistan stands isolated on the world stage. It has been crying and saying the fact that it has been victim of terror. Though it has been a victim of terror, but it, this, this is a Frankenstein created by Pakistan itself, which is eating uh, the country today. But it's still, Pakistan hasn't changed its course and its policy continues to remain like that, which has been creating problems in the entire region from Kabul to now. First reaction by them. Indian establishment on Nawaz Sharif accepting that 2611 was uh, done and of course uh, they had the, the entire thing was uh, mastermind in Pakistan. The comment coming just uh, just uh, uh, 24 after uh, uh, the, that, that interview by Nawaz Sharif uh, in Don Don Yusufa. But interestingly, uh, usually Pakistani leaders, when they're out of power, when they're in trouble, only then they react uh, to, uh, and uh, only then they come up with sub statements. Earlier they are mum and they, they go along with the policy dictated by the Pakistani army. Now Nawaz Sharif, when he's facing problem himself, you know what happened to his prime ministership. He had to be disqualified because he was not Sadiq and Amin uh, under the the, the court of right. uh, there because of the Panama paper. And now he has accepting that despite India extending hand of friendship to Nawaz Sharif, the Prime Minister of India landing in Lahore and we got the Khan right. And now the statement by Nawaz Sharif. Absolutely indeed. Siddhan, do continue to stay on with us. Meanwhile, I'm told that we're also joined in by Mr. Sushant Sareen, who is an expert in Pakistan affairs. Uh, Mr. Sareen, good afternoon to you. This This is an interesting sort of a statement that has in fact been given by the former Pakistani Prime Minister where he's effectively conceding to a stand that India had always been stating that look it were these terrorists based in Pakistan who have masterminded these Mumbai terror attacks and we also just have had the Defence Minister's statement there that Nawaz Sharif has now made a serious disclosure something which the world needs to know what do you make of this how, how can India proceed further to nail the terrorists who carried out this attack, which is almost 10 years ago now? See, I think, uh, number one, what Nawaz Sharif said, uh, I don't think we, the world needs to know. The world mm -hmm. already knows. There's enough evidence all over the world. There are enough statements uh, before Mr. Nawaz Sharif uh, by very senior Pakistani officials, including politicians, uh, who have admitted that, you know, these terrorists came from Pakistan uh, and there are some reasons to believe that there was some kind of state support behind them. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we don't really need to depend only on what Nawaz Sharif said. Right. But yes, it is yet another nail in Pakistan's, the coffin of Pakistan's lies. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, yes, it is very useful. On what India can do, I think India will need to keep pressing this issue. And thankfully, this is one issue uh, that at every available forum, uh, I think India, the Indian government uh, has been raising, uh, has been pointing out, has been demanding justice. And we have received some traction uh, from the rest of the international community, uh, people who keep mentioning these attacks and the need to bring the perpetrators of these attacks to justice. Right. 
but the problem however is you know the kind of furor which has happened in pakistan mm-hmm. is to my mind quite surprising because the pakistanis i think they have gone so far down the tube right. that they are not they are not embarrassed by the fact that their people that their country was involved in an act of mass murder mm-hmm. that is not what is embarrassing them what they have against uh, and their outrage against nawaz sharif is the fact that he has accepted the involvement of pakistan mm-hmm. so the act does not bother them it is the acceptance of the act which bothers them so it right. it tells you of a certain mindset and it also tells you of the stupidity of those indians who think that you can actually talk to the pakistan army the deep state which was responsible for these attacks and actually uh, you know move things forward between the two countries it's not going to happen as long as the pakistan army is structured the way it is you know that that's an interesting thing you know the pakistani deep state the pakistani army uh we know for a fact actually does patronize these terror groups but but what is interesting is also the civil government and members of the civil government nawaz sharif is is perhaps you know the best representative of the civil government in pakistan where he has conceded that look this has happened and he's also in some ways lamented over the fact that the trials for the 26 11 accused in the case have not proceeded in pakistan at all he somehow says that the trials for this case should have been done in a much more fast track manner do you think he's sincere in what he is saying well i don't know see the the thing is that when he was prime minister for four years he was prime minister mm-hmm. so the question which needs to be asked of him is that what did you do to push ahead with these cases when you were prime minister mm-hmm. how come you have suddenly remembered these cases and the involvement of the pakistani deep state and pakistani terror groups in these attacks after you been thrown out of office mm-hmm. so the kind of double speak which happens in pakistan is one problem the second right. problem is that we want to keep put, placing our faith in the civilian leadership little realizing that there are little more than puppets on a string so for example nawaz sharif uh, tried to uh, you know institute some kind of a case on the pathan court attacks mm-hmm. there was an fir filed people were named investigations were ordered have we heard anything about where those investigations went you know so the point is that as a civilian government they act more as a foil when they are in government they act more as a foil to mm-hmm. cover up the actions of the deep state uh, to provide some kind of an alibi to those fellows uh, and it's only when they are out of office that they start remembering the kind right. of nonsense which the deep state does so you know it's a neighbor from hell and we need to learn to deal with it that's as simple as that Absolutely indeed uh, Mr Sushant Sarin thank you very much indeed for joining us and giving us those inputs meanwhile I'm told that uh, Commodore Uday Bhaskar has also joined us on this broadcast in Vion uh, good afternoon to you Commodore this is an interesting admission by no less than a former Pakistani prime minister where he says that terror elements from within Pakistan had masterminded this attack in Mumbai what do you make of this sir? and how can actually India proceed further from here Well, first of all, I would say that this is a significant statement mm-hmm. coming as it does from a former Pakistani Prime Minister. Now, while this particular detail about the perpetrators and those who carried out this attack on Mumbai in November 2008 is reasonably well known mm-hmm. in professional circles, that the Pakistani intelligence agencies and the Pakistani military. had been providing the necessary support and directing these operations it's one thing to have the indian government make this particular charge against pakistan it's quite another to have even the global professional agencies and intelligence people who have written books and reports on this right but when you have a former pakistani prime minister mm-hmm. make this particular statement and if you look at the interview he's given in the dawn the kind mm-hmm. of questions he is asking saying that why is it that we are unable to come to closure on this trial mm-hmm. what kind of a state are we where the whole world is looking at us in a certain manner mm-hmm. and we are not able to get our act together and does it behove a state to send trained terrorists and kill more than 150 that's the number he uses in relation right. to mumbai so i would make the point as an analyst that number one it's a significant statement coming from a former prime minister of pakistan Mm-hmm. Number two, I think it questions and punctures the cocoon of denial uh-huh. that Pakistan has been trying to create. 
both in relation to Mumbai 2008, right. as also the support to terror groups. Because even if you remember after Peshawar, mm -hmm. after Malala, mm -hmm. the narrative in Pakistan is that we are the victims. Right. And we are not directly involved. I think Mr. Nawaz Sharif's statement is doing two things. Raising questions and in a way, if you read this whole thing carefully, he's also mm -hmm. pointing to certain answers. Right. Meaning that the Pakistani deep state and the military. You know, uh, Commander, if I could just in interrupt you there very quickly here, uh, because we are almost out of time. You know, the question that all of this raises is, is Nawaz Sharif and the civilian government in Pakistan that helpless? Because last September, we heard what Khwaja Asif said, that elements such as uh, Hafiz Saeed are a bit of a liability for Pakistan. Is the civilian government, which in the past is known to have patronized some of these elements, which are essentially members who have been propped up by the deep state in Pakistan, so utterly and completely helpless, or does it actually pay for them to play both ways in this game? Well, I would say that this is reflective of a complex churning that is going on in Pakistan just now. Mm -hmm. And all of this is in the run-up to the national election that Pakistan will now be preparing for. And you can see that the civilian government and certain cross-section within the military, they are trying to shape the outcome of this result in a certain way. One indicator to me is very clear, which is that they want to keep Mr. Nawaz Sharif out of the electoral frame. Large number of people in Pakistan believe that the Pakistani military in Rawalpindi would like to have someone like Mr. Imran Khan elevated. So these are the kind of, I would say, mm -hmm. games that are being played in Pakistan just now. And mm -hmm. Mr. Nawaz Sharif, I think, is in a way reaching out to his own people, right. despite the constraints that the Pakistani military is trying to impose on him. All right. In interesting points uh, there, Komodo Rudai Bhaskar. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on this broadcast. And let's also now quickly again listen in to what the Defence Minister of India, Nirmala Sitaraman, had to say after this admission by the former Pakistani Prime Minister. State which has been continuously in denial, even when uh, proofs have been absolutely unquestionable, uh, proofs have been absolutely unquestionable. It is uh, not surprising, but it is absolutely um, something which has to be thrown to the whole world to see, whole world to see, so that they know that all the lectures that Pakistan gives to the whole world about human rights and about how Pakistan itself is a victim is all bogus. Stay. All right, so that was the statement by Nirmala Sitaraman stating that the world needs to know as to what the Pakistani Prime Minister has said about the attack that took place in Mumbai almost about a decade ago.